Hey guys, welcome to this week's CRG. This is part two of our look into the Philips CDI. Last time we fixed the spindle motor in here. This was jammed if you remember, but now we've freed that up and the machine is reading discs again fine. I've picked up a few games in between times. As you can see here, we have Micro Machines, Chaos Control and Seventh Guest. But we still need a controller to be able to play them. There is a couple of genuine CDI controllers on eBay at the minute, ranging from about 60 to 100 pounds, which is absolutely crazy, and I am not paying that for the, how shall we say, quality of a controller that came with these consoles. Instead, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you today how to make an adapter that plugs in here so that you can use your SNES controller on your CDI. We have a bag of goodies here to help us. So, let's take a look. Okay, so we're gonna to need to grab some files first of all. So if we jump online here and we wanna search for SNES to CDI. And it's this one here we're looking for, the GitHub. So these are the files we need. And massive shouts go out to Laurent Berta who created this. This is the instructions we're gonna be following today. Fairly straightforward. So we need to download this. So just click download. Download zip. If you don't have the Arduino software, you'll need to grab that as well. You can click that by following that link. In fact, let me show you. And then you want to click here, just whatever version of it you need. I already have them downloaded here. That's the Arduino software. And there is the SNES to CDI archive. So we'll just extract that. And um, we need to install this. I already have it installed. This is it here. So if we run that, the only thing you'll need to do to the software is to add a library for the SNES pod. So we, to do that, it's fairly straightforward. We uh, just click on sketch, include library, and we're going to add from zip file. Then you need to browse. So it's in my downloads folder in there and it's this mod zip file here you're looking for so just select that and open i already have it in here at the minute that's why i'm getting that error message but it will just add it to your library for you and that pretty much is that we can close arduino again when it comes time to compile the software and transfer it over to the arduino we're going to be using this the sketch snes to cdi When you first open it you probably get this message just click ok so this is it here this is the code that runs the thing i'm not going to pretend to understand half of this so we'll just leave that there for now and while we're making the adapter this is the wiring schematic that we're going to follow as you can see it's relatively straightforward there's only five wires coming out of the snes controller Despite it being 7 pin, only uh, 5 of them are used. Only 3 of them for signal actually, the other ones are just plus 5 on ground. And then out of the CDI itself, again there's only 2 wires for signal and ground and 5 volt. So we're only working with uh, 9 wires here in total that we have to hook up to our Arduino just like this. So it should be fairly straightforward. Let's get the hardware out and uh, let's see if we can make it. Right, let's see if we can turn our schematic into an adapter. So, as I said, we're going to be using our SNES controller. But we don't really want to cut the end of this because we want to be able to use this on our SNES as well. So, what you need to get is one of these. This is just your typical eBay cheap extension lead. 
because all we're interested in is about that much of this end of it. The CDI uses a standard 8 pin DIN connector, or sorry, mini DIN connector here for the joypod. So again, you can pick up these wires fairly cheaply on eBay. Just an 8 pin DIN extension lead. That should plug in here, just like that. So again, we're only gonna be using a section of this wire. And last but not least, we need an Arduino Uno. Now, I did say last week that I was gonna try and do this with the Nano. But truth be told, I have tried to do this already during the week because I've never actually done anything with Arduino before and I cannot for the life of me get it to work with this. So I've picked up the Uno in between times and we're going to follow the GitHub to the letter and hopefully the Uno works. This thing on the other hand, yeah. Right. So, put that to the side for now. We need to make some wires. So I'm gonna give myself, say, like that sort of length, that should be loads. So I'm just gonna cut that off. Then I need to strip this back a bit and just try and figure out what each of those colored cores do correspond to uh, the pins on this. Likewise with this. I'll give myself a similar sort of length, let's see. That's gonna be our wires. That bit goes in there. Snares controller goes in there. And that goes in there. Sort of. Right, I'm gonna strip these down, figure out what cores do what, and uh, then we'll be back to attach it all to the Uno. Okay. I'll stick a wee list on screen now for anyone interested, just to show you what uh, pins relate to what coloured cables. For making the actual final connection to the Arduino, we could solder in here, to solder the wires on direct, but instead of doing that, I'm going to try and make use of these uh, wee pins that came with it. These just plug in, like so, and that will allow us to move the wires around should we accidentally connect them to the wrong place or if we can't get this working. So we're just gonna grab that in the vise. I'm just gonna make off all the wires onto that like that. With a wee bit of heat shrink on them just to protect where it connects. Okay, there's one set done. So we can just snip that now. And then we can just break each of these individually. Because they need to go to different parts on the board. And there we are. That is the snares side done. Right, I'm gonna do the CDI side. And then we'll be back to plug it into our Uno. We'll get it programmed and uh, fingers crossed, it works. 
Okay, so we're ready to connect our wires now to the Uno. So let's just quickly pull up our schematic and our wee schedule showing the different pins and the corresponding cable colours. We'll start with the snares here, so uh, pin 1 which is black, that's a ground and that has to go to Arduino ground, just like that. Pin 4 then is red, it goes to Arduino pin 7, this one. Then we have pin 5, which is white. It goes to Arduino pin 5. Then it's SNES pin 6, which is yellow, which goes to Arduino 6. Come on. And then finally green, which is SNES pin 7, goes to 5 volt. We have two connections to make the 5 volt, so there's two 5 volts labelled here on the board. And we'll just check. Yep. Thought there would be, but there's definitely continuity there between the two of them, so we should be fairly safe hooking up our two 5 volts to the two separate uh, pins that will allow the current to pass through between the CDI and the SNES. Right, next one we'll do is this for connection to the CDI. So I made all these off anyway, but we don't need all of them. We can just cut off later the ones we don't need or we can just uh, bend them back and tape them up or something. So we need pin two, which is brown. And it has to go to Arduino pin 10. Just like that. And then the CDI pin 5, which is, which is yellow, and has to go to ground. That's out in there. Then it's CDI pin 7, which is blue. This one goes to A5, an analog input. And that is way over here. And then lastly, it's CDI pin 8, which is purple. And it goes to our other 5 volt. Which is that one there. Right, so the rest of these are not used then. We'll just bend them out of the way for now. I maybe would uh, prefer to connect this. This is the earth coming from, or sorry, the ground coming from the shield here. I would maybe prefer to have that connected, but well, I'll leave it off for now and then if it works we can connect that up and try it again. I don't see how it would affect it in any way, but uh, we'll just leave it for now. Likewise these other pins, it's not good to leave these floating like this. Um, we could snip them off or we could bend them back and just tape them up back here. We need to make sure none of these touch obviously. Um, we could also just like grind them all, pull them all low, but then again I have no idea what that will do to our CDI. So we'll just leave well enough alone like this for now, just for testing purposes. Okay, next thing to do is to hook this up to the PC and I'll show you how to transfer the software across to it. The wee kit I bought came with one of these uh, USB cables. So just plug that in and uh, we'll jump on the PC and I'll show you how to set up the Uno and how to transfer the software across. Okay, we have the Arduino connected over USB. So we're just going to load the software. The last sketch you have open should automatically open like this. This is our SNES to CDI sketch. Alternatively, you can just browse to the folder wherever it is. So it was in our downloads folder, SNES to CDI, and that's it there. You can open it that way as well. Right. 
Now we have followed the wiring diagram to the letter so we don't need to change anything here. If you did change the pins around a bit, uh, you can't do that, you just need to edit these couple of lines here just wherever you have moved pins to, but why bother? I would just recommend following the wiring diagram. So to upload is fairly straightforward. We need to go to tools first of all. And down here on board, we need to select whatever board we're using. For us, it's the Arduino Uno. And you'll also need to select what port it is connected to. It should automatically detect this. Um, for me, it's USB and COM3. Right, so to upload it, really straightforward. We'll just verify the sketch first of all. Okay, done compiling, no errors. So you just click this arrow here, upload. And that's it, done uploading. That is our Arduino program, simple. Okay, last thing to do then, let's hook it up to the CDI and uh, hopefully it works. Okay, so it is moment of truth time. I've put the Uno into the acrylic case that I picked up for it, just to protect it. Let's uh, plug our 8 pin DIN end into the CDI. There we are. And let's get our SNES controller. And plug this in here. Right, here we go. This is SNES controller going to operate this. There's our cursor here. Let's see if it's going to work. Yep. Fantastic. We have successfully created our SNES to CDI controller. Let's have a look in the options menu here quickly. What sort of options does a CDI have? CD audio options. Pretty standard stuff. Uh, general. Autoplay, maximum volume, dim time. Yep. Time and date. You know what we'll do? We'll set the time and date quickly. So it is. Uh, it's not 1989. It was 2019. This is August the 31st. And it is about. What time is it? It is 9 p.m. on the dot. I'll do. This will just give us some idea if the battery in here is still holding uh, a charge, so it will remember the, the time. Right, storage. Is there anything stored on our CDI? Nope. That would actually make me believe that the battery in here is maybe not as good as we think. Because surely over the years something would have been stored. Alright, so there's our time and date on screen now. Okay. You know what we need to do? We need to try a game. Let's load up a bit of Micro Machines. Fantastic game from the early 90s. It probably was released on every system of the time. I think I would have to go with the Mega Drive port as my favourite version of it. The Amiga port is a bit lacklustre to be honest. So. Let's see where the Philips CDI port falls between those two. One of the only two player games on this week console actually. Well we'll just do one player for now. Because I don't have the breakout cable to let you have two players.
Nice wee FMV intro, showing off some of the features of the wee console here. Right, here are we, we're the yellow guy. Let's go. Um, yeah. What was I saying about the Amiga port? <laughs> I think we may have a new crown for the worst uh, Micro Machines port. Incredibly jerky graphics. No sound effects? What the heck? Come on. Yes, we are getting CD audio, but no sound effects. What is going on? Okay, so not impressed so far, but our controller is working. Alright, let's just have a quick race, shall we? Another nice wee FMV intro. And then into the race. Let's go. Oh my goodness. Alright, so the lack of sound effects is uh, appalling to say the least. The frame rate of the game isn't it isn't great. I think the Amiga version has a better frame rate than this. Yeah, okay, we are getting CD audio, but uh, does anyone else think that the track playing doesn't really suit the game? Maybe it's just me. So slow at times. You can see when there's more on screen. The system just lags like crazy. Why did I buy this console? Can anyone remind me? Let's just drive off the table while we Where's my competitors anyway? I haven't seen them in ages. Oh well. So yeah, a little disappointed actually in Micro Machines. So much for an exclusive edition, Phillips. Exclusively, uh, not very good. We'll leave it at that. Right, well that's it for this video. We have our SNES to CDI converter working using our Arduino Uno. Well, thanks very much for watching. If you enjoyed what you've seen, please hit that thumbs up as it does really help the channel. Please consider subscribing so you do not miss the next part in which we are going to try an RGB mod the wee CDI to try and get a slightly better picture out of it. Compass it's all well and good but you can see it's a little fuzzy around the edges. So we're going to try and sort that out next time. But until then guys, thanks for watching.